Highway 53 runs right through the heart of Alberta's coal country. It's also the road to Forestburg, Alberta. A tiny village of fewer than 900, Forestburg's past is steeped in the coal industry. Inside the local hardware store, Bob Coots keeps the shelves stocked. The family business opened in 1933 has been around almost as long as the coal industry here. There's been coal mines here ever since the early 1900s and uh, it's always been an integral part and when they built the power plant that ran off coal, that uh, just helped to build that, that business in, in this area. These days, Forestburg is home to both a coal mine and a coal-fired power plant. Both are key to the success of Forestburg's economy, and finding something to fill that void once the cash from coal fades away will be a challenge. The best help that we can have is to help to diversify our economy so it's not based on, on coal and, and to, give us other in, to help us to establish other industries that are suitable for this area. As with many places across Canada, you can learn a lot about a community by checking out its local rink. Uh, here in Forestburg, they're very proud of their new arena, but they worry about filling it in the future. Completed in 2011, this rink is more than just an arena. It's a gathering place for this community. Even here, signs of the coal industry are everywhere. The worry is that if the industry collapses, local facilities like the rink might disappear too. Desiree Strauss spends a lot of time here. All three of her kids play hockey, as does her husband. Now Strauss plays too when the women of Forestburg can scrape together enough players, a tough task that could soon be even harder. We're a pretty small community, so we share some of our teams with some of the other surrounding communities. And uh, if we were to lose half the families here in town, we might not have half the teams. And while the end of coal may be inevitable in Alberta, for Strauss, it's also personal. It would be sad to see a lot of our friends go because we have some friends that both parents work down at the plant. If that plant's not there, well, why, why would they stay? On the other side of town, Doug Brown has worries of his own. Brown built this new shop about six years ago when the future looked brighter. Now the former soldier worries if he'll be able to get his money out. Yeah, this shop is, uh, we, me and my wife look at it, this shop is our retirement fund. You want to be able to sell it, and that's your, that's your life savings have gone into it. And uh, yeah, so if it's not worth much, if I can barely pay off the mortgage, it doesn't give me much of a retirement fund. <laughs> there is an understanding here that burning coal is bad for the environment. But the question for many here is why more isn't being done to burn it cleaner? You know, technology's there. Why don't they make the, why aren't they told to make the coal cleaner burning? There are technologies to make it work. Well, for now, at least, making Alberta's coal industry cleaner isn't part of the plan. The province does say it will begin consulting with communities like Forestburg in the next week or so about life after coal. But with the oil and gas industry already feeling the pinch of $30 oil here in Alberta, the end of coal in this province could mean that many communities like Forestburg simply won't have the energy to thrive. Aaron Collins, CBC News, Forestburg, Alberta.